Mr. Putnam, your research shows that the starting point for rich kids and poor kids has changed. Uh, how does that show specifically? Uh, there are many different examples of the fact that kids coming from more affluent backgrounds are getting more time from their parents, for example, parents reading to them, getting more money from their parents, for example, sending them to summer camp, um, are more involved in community activities like the scouts or or playing football at school. All of those measures of kids from affluent backgrounds are going up, um, whereas on the same measures, kids from working class or lower class backgrounds are going down. They have less time with their parents, less money from their parents, less involvement in extracurricular activities, less likely to go to church, less likely to to uh, be trusting of other people. So all of that, all of those measures together show this growing gap in the starting points of kids. What is the main cause for this development? Well, it's a perfect storm with multiple causes. Um, part of it, the underlying factor, of course, is this growing income gap in America, the sort of thing that Piketty talks about but not the gap between the very, very, very rich and everybody else. This is a gap between relatively well-educated Americans and and poorer Americans, where the, the poor Americans have been subject to more economic insecurity. And therefore, as, as um, Laura Bush, the wife of the president, said, they spend more time worrying about having to worry about Um, whether, whether they're going to keep their job in their house and less time, they have less time and energy to invest in their kids. So part of it is that. Part of it is that the working class, the white working class family has in the last 20 or 30 years collapsed basically so that most kids, white kids coming from high school educated homes have only a single parent and that makes it harder for them to get a good start. Um, There are other ancillary causes, so this is this is a mystery a little bit like the murder on the Orient Express. You remember in the murder on the Orient Express, there everybody uh, was in some sense a, a guilty party, and this is is a guilty part. There, there are many causes here, but I think the fundamental cause um, is that our collective sense of worrying about all the kids in America, our sense of worrying about our kids, has narrowed, sh- shrunken, shriveled over the last 30 years. So we used to think of, when we said our kids, we meant all the kids in town. And now when we say our kids, we mean my biological kids. And those other kids are not my kids. And I think that shrinking of our sense of who we're responsible for is the underlying, underlying cause for a lot of these other changes. So how can we stop this development in the gap growing? Is education the big, big answer? Education is part of the answer, especially preschool education, early preschool education. And part of that is helping uh, work, lower working class parents to become better parents. Uh, they have a lot of other things on their mind, and I'm not saying that they're... They, they all love their kids, and they'd like to be helpful, but they don't have either the time or the skill to know what's most important. So we need, to, uh, we need a coordinated, multidisciplinary approach to the problem. Schools did not cause the problem, but schools is where the kids are. So in that sense, schools may be the right place to try out remedies. Just one last question. Do you see the same challenge in the Nordic welfare societies? I'm not an expert on the Nordic societies, although I spend a lot of time up here. Um, of course, the level of inequality and the level of of degradation in communities is much lower here than in the United States. Um, you're a much more homogeneous set of communities. Um, but I do think there are some potential parallels between the problem I've talked about and problems that perhaps are emerging in the Nordic countries. The, the key question that people in this part of the world should ask themselves is, do they really think that the children of immigrants born here in Denmark are their kids? Do they think of those kids as part of our kids? Or do they think of them as their kids, somebody else's kids? And I don't know what the answer to that is, but it would be interesting to ask. Thank you very much. Thank you.